Hey, it's Pete from Crunch Time Coaching, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the only serve you need to dominate your matches. I'm gonna explain why this serve is easier to develop than any other serve, why it's more effective, and I'm also going to invite you into my seven-day serve challenge for free so I can teach you how to do this step by step. You're going to love this. This is my favorite serve by far, so I can't wait to dive into this video. Let's get started. All right, so there's three types of serves that people have, that's it. <laughs> there's the flat serve, and a lot of people start out with a flat serve because, first of all, they're starting with the wrong grip or a grip that you really can only hit a flat serve in. And so it's simple to just kind of put the ball in play. That ball doesn't have any spin on it, it's flat. Now, the positives of having a flat serve is that you can get a good amount of pace on the ball. You can get a good amount of pace. Even the pros, when they want to hit a big bombing serve, what are they doing? They're flattening their serve out. So you can hit a serve really, really hard, and it's also very easy to learn. All you need to do is basically do that, and you've got yourself a flat serve. So to learn more of a, a different types of spin, it's gonna be a little bit more of a learning curve, a little tougher to learn, but I'm gonna explain uh, why I really love teaching this one particular serve to you. So the flat serve is one that you want, but the negatives, what's the negatives? You can hit the ball harder, it's, it's easier to do. So you're like, well Pete, this sounds great to me. The problem with a flat serve though, only having a flat serve, you can't play an entire match with just a flat serve and really dominate your, your serve games because you can hit a big bombing serve. How many players, and you might be one of them, have you seen that come up and they just have a big bomb of a serve for the first serve and then they just tap the ball in for the second serve? That's because all they have is a flat serve and they know that they can't consistently make that. So that's the big downside of just serving and trying to play a complete match with just your flat serve. So you're gonna need more than that. So let's get to serve number two. Okay, so the second type of serve is the kick serve. And this is a great serve, especially for a lot of righties because you can kick the ball up at your opponent's backhand. So it's a really good serve for, for righties to develop if you can do it. The advantage of a kick serve, first of all, right off the bat, we got spin on the ball. So it's gonna be safer because the ball is going high over the net, especially with a kick serve. That ball goes high over the net and, and the spin is bringing the ball back down in the court. And because it's got kick or top spin on the ball, when it bounces, it rebounds high off the bounce. So this is a serve that you can get up out of your opponent's strike zone, especially if they got that one-hander, and you can get a lot of easy points, or you can set up your volley, or you can have your partner poach on that. That's great. So the kick serve should be number one, right? Well, I think even for righties, it is not number one, and here's why. I think that the kick serve is a great serve, but it takes a lot of skill. I think it takes the most skill, in my opinion. Comment below, let me know what serve you think takes the most amount of skill to perform. I happen to think it's the kick serve because when you're hitting that kick serve, number one is I definitely think it needs to be going over your ball cap here or your head. It's gotta be coming here, so you're tossing it that way, which requires a back arch requires a back arch. Another thing too to really have a great kick serve is I think it requires the most knee bend so you can really bend those knees and then extend up out of there and the more you can do that successfully accelerate and explode up into that ball the ball can really kick up at your opponent. It can be a really tough serve to corral and, and get back. Okay, But if you can't do all those things but you have some sort of kick serve, well then your kick serve can just be literally sitting there, it can be working against you. It, it doesn't really explode off the court and it's bounced up here nice and high in the, in the strike zone and if your opponent can cheat inside the court, now they can just basically take it as a high, easy, almost approach shot and crush your kick serve. I've seen people who have weaker kick serves, it works against them. They're just getting picked on all the time because the ball's just sitting up there. All right, I also think that the kick serve compared to the last serve I'm going to explain to you, doesn't have as much variety. It, it, it really doesn't move through the air as much as the last serve I'm going to explain to you. Okay, so the benefits of a kick serve is now we got spin on the ball, so that's great. So you can use it for first and second serve. If you've got a really good kick serve, you can make the ball bounce high out of the strike zone. It's really good for righties because you can find your opponent's backhand. That's all great. 
but it's not my number one serve. So I'm gonna come back and explain what my number one serve is. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna talk, talk about how to use it, and then I'm gonna talk about how to teach it to you. Okay, so my number one serve for righties and lefties. Now, everybody's gonna be thinking, well, Pete, we obviously know it's the best for lefties. And that is the slice serve, okay? I love the slice serve because, again, it's got spin on it. You win with spin. So I can use the slice serve on my first and my second serve. The flat serve, I can't really do that with. And as a lefty, I love it because I'm naturally finding my opponent's backhand. So that's especially why I love it. And when we think about the slice serve, we're thinking about what? Usually thinking as a lefty, right? That nasty lefty serve from the ad side, going, pulling your opponent off the court, into the fence, into the curtain inside, which I'm gonna be showing you in this video. And so you can really get your opponent off the court. That's number one. I think the, the slice serve can get your opponent further off the court than any other serve. For the righty, it still works great, okay? You are serving a lot of times at your opponent's strength. If you're playing another righty, you're serving at their forehand, but don't look at that as a negative. If you can get it off the court, first of all, it's not in their strike zone. They're having to stretch. Now their forehand's coming back weaker, and now you can pull the ball to the backhand corner. You can attack the weakness. So don't just think that this is a serve for lefties. But that's not it. That, see, when you hit a slice serve, what I want people to really, really understand and why I think it's the most effective serve and why it's the only serve you need to dominate a match is you can hit a bunch of different slice serves. Most people just think of the out wide serve. That's one of the serves. But you can even just ha add variety in that corner serve. You can hit some serves softer to where it's really curving off the court. Maybe it's going slower, but it's really going shorter in the box, going off the court. You can also hit your slice serve a little more flat with a little more pace going deeper in the box. But beyond that, then another one that you can do is you can also hit a slice serve into the body. So if you're bringing your opponent off the court and then going at their body, now just with those two serves, I think you can dominate a match. But I also like a third one, especially for doubles, to where when you slice the ball, you can actually have it coming over it's actually going on this side and then over the center strap as it's dropping into the box and you can still get it to your opponent's backhand even on the due side as a right hander. So you can still hit your second serve, especially in doubles, you can still with a slice find your opponent's backhand. So I, I think it's really great for, for all, the, all the variety that you have and also with a slice serve. Here's what I really like about a slice serve for the recreational player. I do believe with a kick serve you've got to have more physical skills, right? You've got to arch the back. You've got to bend the knees. With a slice serve, watch this. Watch how beautiful this is. When I hit a slice serve, I don't need any knee bend. Of course, if I add knee bend, the slice serve is going to be better, but I don't really need it. I don't need to arch the back a bunch. I don't, another thing about the kick serve is when you throw the kick serve up, it goes up, and then you got to let it drop a little more. So the time is a little harder. I can basically throw the slice serve right up to the peak of the toss and start to cut the ball. Okay? So when I do that, there, you can see what I did. No knees. <laughs> really easy. I just throw it out to the side. Super easy to hit. Just curl around the ball, and now all of a sudden I'm slicing my opponent off the court. Really easy to do physically. And now once I learn that serve, now I can bring it into the body. I can bring it over the center strap. So I can have my opponent guessing. Another thing too is you're not going to see, even though it's a much easier to hit, you're not going to see a lot of recreational players with a great slice serve. So the fact that it is curving in, a lot of your opponents haven't seen that or they've seen it very rarely or they haven't seen it done at a very high level. So if you can really make that ball spin in at them, it's very confusing and it's running away from them. Okay, It's running away from them or it's attacking them into the body. Those are the two ways you want to use it. Another thing that's great about the slice serve is we, we talked about the kick serve, how it can kick up. But for too many people, the kick serve sits up. The thing about a slice serve is it skids and it stays low. So you're having your opponent, where does everybody want to hit the ball? I think people want to hit the ball right here. And then a lot of people, especially if they got a little more of aggressive semi-western grip, which more and more players have, even a lot of older recreational players in their 50s and 60s have changed with online instruction. They're watching online instruction, so they've changed that semi-western grip. But the slice serve stays low and runs away. So you're having to get down here. That's going to make the ball pop up, especially if you're playing doubles out there. 
This is gonna set up a lot of easy values for your partner. So your partner's gonna love playing with you if you've got that slice serve, okay? So it's, it's a big, big advantage to have. And what I wanna show you right now before I invite you into the seven day serve challenge is I want to show you a drill that I bet that you've never done. So if you're watching me do this right now, you're seeing with the slice serve that I am working all different spots in the box. You're seeing the ball go out wide. You're seeing the ball go deeper. You're seeing it hook into the body. These are all the things that I want you to practice. Just don't go out there and just always aim your slice serve off the court. So I want you to go out and do this drill that I'm showing you right now. And then I'm showing you some points that you can see that because I'm doing all of this, I'm getting a lot of free points. I'm getting my opponent to go into the curtain. I, when it's going into the body, I'm either getting a weak, a weak reply to where I can put away a forehand or the ball's not coming back. And another thing too is once you master that if you do happen to have a flat serve or a kick serve it sets that up so much easier I'm gonna show you a kick serve right now a couple of kick serves that I've won the point one here with an ace and then another one was a weak reply and the reason why this kick serve won me the point wasn't because the kick serve was so great it was a good kick serve it wasn't great but it's because my opponent was waiting on the slice they were expecting the slice so I just put the kick serve out there all of a sudden they were nowhere near to be found. So it can set up your other serves, okay? So I want to invite you to my seven day serve challenge, which you can sign up and get free 48 hour access so you can see if you really love it, all right? So you can sign up, get free 48 hour access. We're starting February 22nd, and here's everything that you're gonna learn inside of the seven day uh, serve challenge. I call it the serve obsession challenge because I want you to get, uh, get obsessed about your serve for seven days, and so on day one, I'm going to walk you through the perfect practice template. So when you go out for the rest of your life, you can have this one practice to where you know that you are not wasting any time. Too many people just go out with their bucket of balls and they're just reinforcing bad habits. This is why people get stuck at 3-0, 3-5, low 4-0 levels for 15, 20, 30 years because they just keep doing the same things that are not getting their, their game to the next level. On day two, and we all know how frustrating the toss can be. I I actually had super embarrassing story. I was a director at a tennis club and I was playing tournaments and I was going through a year or two where I lost control of my toss. Completely embarrassing. So I have a 10 minute toss fix for you. Right now when I toss the ball up, I feel really, really confident. I love my toss and I wanna show you the system that you can go through. On day three, we're gonna fix the number one serve mistake. So before I can teach you the slice serve or the kick serve, which we're gonna get to in the seven day serve challenge, before I can teach you that, we gotta get rid of the number one serve mistake held, I think it holds back about 80% of recreational players, and that is the pizza move. That's where your racket comes back here, and we all know it's wrong, but that muscle memory is a beast, and it's so hard to fix. So I show you the system on how to fix the dreaded pizza move, so you can start to serve more like the pros. On day four, we're gonna go through pronate like the pros. And a lot of people are confused with what pronation is, so I, ex I clearly explain what pronation is. But I think what a lot of people don't think about, you also kind of equate pronation with maybe more racket head speed, more power. But there's different little nuances within your pronation, the way you approach the ball, that's going to affect the speed that's coming off of the racket. But you're still swinging just as fast. One of the coolest things I ever saw there's this pro on tour, Katie McNally. I actually know her because we do some clinics at Harper's Point in Cincinnati, which is her home club. That's where she grew up. And right now she plays doubles with Coco Golf. She's also doing great things on, this, on the singles tour as well. But she made a video, I think it was for the Tennis Channel, to where they asked her, hey, serve it at 80 miles an hour. Guess what Katie did? Bam, 80 miles an hour. Serve it at 90 miles an hour. Katie did 90. Serve it one at 100. She was able to go on a dime from 80 to 90 to 100. How is she doing that? And the serve looked the same exact pace. She was hitting different parts of the ball. Her pronation follow through is just a little bit different. Subtle differences that you can't really pick up on camera. I kind of show you how to do that on day four. Day five is a day you don't want to miss because we're going to go through powerhouse serving. We're going to join the 100 mile an hour club. I'm going to show you the steps that you need. It's about a 30 minute video. I went all in on these videos for you guys. It's a 30 minute video that gives you a bunch bunch of drills and tips and lessons on how to finally serve over 100 miles an hour. 
And then on day six, it's the most important day in my opinion. It is the one serve that you need to dominate all your matches and that is serve the curve, my slice serve. It is my favorite serve by far. Of course, I had big incentive to private lesson to get my life's work on the serve. So it's a complete steal of a deal. But then when the week is over, then we put the seven day serve challenge back in the vault. We only did it one time last year. I might do it more this year. I haven't made up my mind. But for right now, we're closing it up. I don't know when we'll open it back up. And you can't, you just can't access it. You don't, there's no price to it. You just can't, it's not available. So definitely sign up for the seven day serve challenge. I'll see you inside. We're gonna start on February 22nd. You can send videos to me. Look at this note from uh, one of our new members, Michael, who signed up for Next Level University, but he can send in serve videos and he didn't even really expect much from the program. Look what he just wrote me, this testimonial. I just got this today, hot off the presses, to where he's already feeling more confident on the serve and also he won his matches, even more important. All right, so you can get free coaching. We're also giving away cash prizes. Like if you watch this video to the end and you don't sign up for the seven day serve challenge, guess what? You don't love tennis, shame on you. All right, we'll see you on the next video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. We'll be back with more serve videos, more forehand videos, more backhand videos. We're working on getting up to 50,000 subscribers. When we do, I'm gonna give away something awesome to one of our subscribers. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you guys on the next video.